This song is called Where's the Passion? And it's a really special song in the story of Invisible because it's about the midway point in the story, but it's the song where our main character is really trying to find himself and find what used to get him excited in life and if he could ever find it again. And I picked a really special drum kit for this song. It's DW's Santa Monica drum kit. DW is paying homage to their old vintage Camco series drums that they built back in the 80s, and they are fantastic sounding drum kits. They're all maple drums, six ply shells, but each individual ply, I should say, is a little bit thicker than their normal ply. So the drums are a little bit beefier. They also have reinforcement rings throughout all of the drums, and the reinforcement rings, which are normally three plies, are six plies. So these are hardy drums that just have a fat sound. All of the toms are outfitted with clear Remo Emperors on the top and single ply DW heads on the bottom, which are Remo Ambassadors, single ply Remo Ambassadors. Now in the toms, I cheated a little bit. I do my trick where I put a little bit of cotton in each of the drums because of a couple things. These drums ring beautifully and I wanted to dampen down the ring just a tiny bit so they didn't ring too much. And the sizes are really cool. There's a 12 and a 13 inch rack tom, which is really cool, that's old school. And then we have big 16 and 18 inch floor toms. So these, these toms just sing and they play an important role in this tune. Before I get to the kick and snare, I'm gonna play the toms just so you can hear them on their own for a second. Here we go. Yeah, punchy and fat and loud and round and just really musical. And what's cool about the 12 and 13 inch rack tom, you can start low and just get even lower from there. It's really cool old school style of sizes in your drum kit. 22 inch kick drum outfitted with a clear Remo Power Stroke 3. Matching snare drum, six and a half by 14. It has a DW single ply, sort of ambassador style. Remo head on the top, coated with DW numbers all around for the tuning rods. One drum tack on the snare drum just for a tiny bit of dampening. The DW pillows inside the kick drum for a little dampening there. And overall, this is a fantastic kit that just sings for this song and gives it the special vibe that this song needed. So much fun to play. I outfitted this kit with Sabian symbols all around me. Legacy and or HHX Evolution. So Dave Weckl's getting a lot of love on the drum kit today because these are his symbols and they sound perfect here. So I have the 18 and 19 inch crashes, HHX Legacy, the 22 inch heavy ride, the rest HHX Evolution, 18 inch crash here. I have an 18 inch ozone crash on my far left, a seven and a 10 inch splash, and last but not least over here on my far right is an HHX 18 inch China. Nice, splashy, loud sound that goes well with all these other crash cymbals here. The hi-hats on this kit are my go-to 16 inch AA Apollo hats. I love them because they're big. 16 is great size for hats. They're washy in a nice dark way. So it doesn't kind of, you don't get the brittle hi-hat sound at all that overtakes a track. These really sit in the track just right. The sticks I'm using are Vic Firth 55As perfect balance, perfect weight. Really, I can dig into these toms as much as I want to. I can play the rest of the drums as light as I want to. I can get uh, really delicate with the cymbals, or I can bash the living bejeebers out of them and really crash ride like I want to, which I do in this track in the pre-chorus a couple of different times. The drum parts for this song sound pretty simple to play, and they are, but there's some technical things with them that have to fit the main theme of this song. And the main theme of this song is when I sing the words, where's the passion? Where's the love that made you who you are? All of those beats are actually not on the downbeat. So you have to feel the upbeats that make sense. So what I'm gonna do for, I'm gonna sing the theme for you real quick and show you where those accents are. And then I'll play the part. You kind of hear where I was coming, where my mind was when I was coming up with this part. So your pulse is right here. Main tempo, quarter notes, 4-4 four, four time. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. 
So you see all those notes are actually on the upbeat. And I wanted to hit all those crashes, and then at the very end of the phrase, there's a bar of three, so the time signature changes a little bit too. My whole thought behind the drum part was trying to make it sound musical and just groovy. So you weren't thinking or thinking there was a time signature change or hearing it, it just kind of felt natural. So let me play that part for you real quick with that theme going on in your head, hopefully. Here we go. What I found made it a little bit easier for me is that I kept the hi-hat going the whole time on this, the quarter note, the quarter note pulse. So whenever I crashed on the upbeat, I had the, the rock, the foundation of the quarter notes still going with my left foot. The verse groove in this tune is actually pretty simple to play. It's just 16th notes in your right hand, two and four on your left, and I could have played it sort of like this. which is cool, but to give it a little more flavor, a little more just life to it, I added a little bit of buzz here and a little bit of ghost note there, made it sound like this. Those little ghost notes, a buzz here and there, just propels the groove forward and gives it a little bit more life sitting in the track. Okay, the song is called Where's the Passion? It's the centerpiece of the whole record. Let's hear it all right now. 